Jason Rice here, another lot party quick tip. Hopefully everybody's hearing this well. I am launching live on multiple platforms. Please subscribe or like and share if it's something that you enjoy. If you're listening to this on podcast, I would encourage you at some point in time to flip over. You can follow the conversation uh, through the podcast, but maybe flip over uh, to YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn if you want to see the charts I'm about ready to refer to. And the title of this being lead turnaround time is the same as inventory turnaround time. Hear me out. Let me kind of explain where we're coming from now. Um, you know, what we've been doing with dealers is helping them integrate both inventory management with lead management and lead management with inventory management. What I mean by that is if you got a large pickup truck problem, let's isolate large pickup truck leads and concentrate on contact and email the large pickup truck leads. The other thing that we've been uh, discussing, and we if you've followed me for a while, you'll know what we've been talking about. And that's, you know, percentage of leads, uh, active leads on cars that are sold. First example, that number. I'll, I'll share four numbers with you. Um, you could dig deeper into other conversations of YouTube that I've done this on or reach out to me. I explain it better to you, but let me give you the four numbers. The first one is 60 to 70% of your active leads over the last 60 days are in vehicles that are no longer in stock. They submit a lead, the car sells, you got, a, 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 they submit a lead on a car, it's in stock. Two weeks later, two weeks later, the car sells. You still are following up with that active lead, but a vehicle no longer in stock. We call those switch leads. Okay, show them other trucks around the same price point, which our Lot Walk product does. Try to switch them from one vehicle to the other. Sixty to seventy percent can't buy the car they acquired about in the first place. The other three numbers: half of your leads are on just ten percent of your inventory. So if you have a hundred cars, ten of those ten cars are getting half your leads, or if you equate a lead to an activity, half your phone calls. The other number is half your inventory doesn't have leads. Okay, so um, we only work cars that we get leads on. If I get a lead on a car, I'm going to call and email that customer about that car. If a car has no leads, your team's not helping you sell half your inventory. I'll show you how we help try to solve that problem for you. The last number is 80%. 70 to 80% of the calls and emails you're doing have nothing to do to help you sell a car that's in stock today. Okay, so if you do 100 calls and emails today, 80, 70, 80 of those calls have nothing to do with an in-stock vehicle, okay, to help move your inventory. So I want to set the stage. Uh, again, I can break the, those metrics down. Uh, get a hold of me. I can show you show you the math on all that and, and the impact and, again, what LotWalk can do to help you solve all that. But what I wanted to show you today is another number that just kind of gave me an aha moment that I didn't think about before, but it makes total sense. So I'm going to share my screen here in a minute. Hold on one second as I pull it up. Now, what you're going to see here is a chart that I, I share quite often. And what we look at, and I won't go through all the details, uh, but we're looking at, you know, what the black book uh, wholesale percentage is. You know, uh, example here, April 17th, 2021, 75% of what went through the lane sold um, to where right now we're at uh, only 53% of what's going through the lane is selling. So 47% is not selling. Um, shopper index, we're going to dig into that. That's the red line. That's Google shopper index. That's people, how many people are going online to Google searching for used cars, and we watch the seasonal patterns increase and decrease. And I'm going to take that red number. I'm going to break that number down. That's part of this um, the lead turnaround time. Uh, the, our, vehicle, our dealer's two-week sold percentage, that number is in here. What, what percentage of their inventory they sell in the last two weeks? Examples right now, as of uh, today, uh, our dealers are selling 52% of their current inventory in two weeks. That means they're selling 104% of their inventory in a month. So our dealers are doing really well right now. They are carrying 100, they're on pace to sell 104. Maybe that's why you need to be a client if you're not doing that. Then uh, we also looked at the average retail to sold. The two numbers that I want you to look at are the red shopper index and the green two week sold percentage because they go verbatim within a week or two of each other. As the shopper count peaks, let's look right here at this highest level. March 20th, the shopper index peaked at 100 percent, meaning out of that this window of time, that's where the most shoppers were looking for a used car was March 20th. If you look at when our dealers two week sold percentage peaked, it was April 3rd. Okay, April 3rd right here, two weeks later. And again, we're looking at the last two weeks. So as the shopper count went up, 
the sales followed. As the shopper count and peak, peaked here, the sales followed. As the shopper count peaked here, the sales followed. As the shopper count decreased, the sales followed. And as the shopper count is increasing right now, the sales are following. Okay. So the shopper index is a, a direct reflective of how our dealer's volume is going. It's an obvious, okay? That makes total sense. So here's where I say lead turnaround time is the same as inventory turnaround. As we sell more inventory, we have to go buy and replace more inventory. We might be trading in more inventory. One way or the other, we're selling cars, we're replenishing them with more cars. If I was selling 20 a week, 80 a month, if I'm selling 20 or 25 a week, 80 to 100 a month, Okay, I'm replenishing hopefully another 20 to 25 a week. Now, turnaround time. Now I now I got 25 cars I just bought. I got to put through service. I got a photo. I got to get them through service, every repair, get it clean, get it online, ready for sale. Okay, so let's say I average pace. Let's go back to that 20 number, 20 a week. All right. And so I staff for that. Let's just say there's one detail person, a photo person, and whatever text. Okay. Now all of a sudden my sales increase because the shopper count increases. So my sales go from 20 a week to 35 in a week. So guess what happens to my um, my acquisition and, and buying and trading for vehicles? Instead of taking 20 cars a week and putting it through a service department. I'll all of a sudden have to have 35 going through my service department. And what happens then, instead of having a, a five or seven day turnaround time when I was doing 20 a week, now it's taken 14 plus days to get my cars ready for sale because I'm shoving 35 cars into a department that is only manned for 20 cars and the processes are there. Okay. So my turnaround time slows down within my, which then slows down my fresh sale rate, which then slows down my inventory and start causing an aging problem. Okay. Now take that inventory example we all live through and let's wrap it back around to shopper activity. When shopper activity increases, so do my sales. So what does that mean? Lead activity increases. So all these peaks here where the, we want, and think about this. When the shopper count was at 55%, December 25th, okay, Christmas, and it jumped all the way up to 81% in a, in a two to three month window, okay, two month window essentially, two and a half month window, 45 days. It's a totally different market. It's a totally different sales process, okay? I might have went from having 100 leads a week to now 200 leads a week. So what happens then when I have a staff that can handle 100 leads a week, all of a sudden happen to handle 200 leads per week. And what happens when we manage leads based on the age of the lead? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing right now. What, what, do we ha what happens when we manage leads based on the age of the lead? Well, when we get a fresh lead, we get all excited and we get that uh, fresh lead uh, to call and email more frequently. So here we are getting tied up in these fresh leads, trying to call an email. And guess what gaps start happening in that contact ratio on those fresh leads. And guess what other gaps start happening? We don't follow up with the older leads anymore, the 30 and 45 daily, because we're only dealing with those fresh leads, which then seem more important. Okay. Now that is in itself is causing huge issues. And I'm going to share my screen again. So I'm going to, I, I took it off, but I'm going to share some that right there is causing huge issues because all of a sudden, instead of just handling a hundred leads a week, I'm handling 200 and then the older, the 20 and the 30 day old lead, even though they're still on a card in stock, they're not getting followed up with because I got another batch of fresh leads. And now all of a sudden we feel like we have to hire and then the leads start dropping down again, going into another month or two later. Okay. And so that's where I say lead turnaround time is the same as inventory turnaround time. We're running into all these issues on lead lead management because we're managing leads based on the age of the lead and not based on the situation on a lot like I talked about earlier that truck lead. So here's what I wanted to show you in our in my and in, in the uh, with the lead stuff. Here's the cars. Here's your leads on those cars, okay? Now this is a this is a demo dealer, but it's a it's a live dealer. And here's what I want to show you. Over the last 60 days they had 380 leads. Now imagine if that 380 was just 200 a week ago or two months ago. Okay. So I'm staffed for 200 leads. Now all of a sudden I have 348 leads. 
on my used cars. And what's happening? I've got one or two people trying to handle twice as much work as what they tend to because we're managing these based on the age of lead. And all we're doing is clearing out task in our CRM, three day call, 14 day email, and just trying to keep, keep up. We do 125 calls and emails a day. And the next thing you know, that's only good enough when I only had 150 leads to handle. Now I got 350 leads to handle or, or whatever the math works out to be. And then we get behind instead of coming in with 120 tasks today, I got 180 tasks today because I get in the, through the 150 yesterday and 30 carried over. And if I don't get through with these and you know the end of the story, you know how this works out. So my point is, remember the first uh, number I gave you, if 60 to 70% of your leads can't buy the car they're interested in anymore, that only leaves a small percentage of your active leads where cars still in stock. So see this 380 leads, think in your head, how many, how many BDC or internet sales team people do you need to handle 380 leads? If that's all they're doing is handling leads, I would say three to four people, probably four to five people actually. You would need four to five people to handle 381 leads, weed through them all, call an email, do three-day calls, seven-day emails, 10-day phone calls, whatever day text, okay? But here's my point. Of those 380, only 94 still have the vehicle in stock, okay? Again, we're almost at 100 leads, or 400 leads, I'm sorry. 381 is almost 400 for easy math, hear me out. 400 leads with 100 only of those with the car still in stock, Okay, 75% of this dealer's active leads can't buy the car they want any longer. I'm not giving up on those leads. I'm going to continue to follow up and hear me out. If we, if we just spent the energy and, and most of our time and energy on the 94 active leads where the car's still in stock, remember the last number I gave you, 80% of the calls and emails we're doing has nothing to do to help me sell a car today. And the math works out right here. If we could call every 381 leads today, if you called every one of them, okay, today, 75% of those calls and emails are going to go to people that can no longer buy the car in stock. Only 94 of those calls and emails will actually impact my current inventory today. Okay. Mm -hmm. So of the 400 calls and emails you're doing, only a hundred of them will actually help you sell a car that's sitting on your lot today. That's the math that I'm talking about. So as the, we're going into, I'll share that screen again. We're going into, um, where's that Google sheet uh, right here. We're going into a peak. A, a tax time peak where the activity, the shopper count's going to go up. That means our lead count's going to go up. That means our sales will go up and our team's going to get very busy and backlogged. So instead of having a very, maybe you have a quick initial response time, five minutes. Okay, great. But now instead of calling each lead, especially the fresh leads every day, every other day, it's taken three to five days or seven days before you're reaching out again, because again, you're getting backlogged. But if you can just handle the effective leads, the 94 leads where the car's still in stock, right? And then from there, if that doesn't work, you know, there's 211 active leads that have a switch opportunity, meaning that the car that they're wanting no longer in stock, but I have something else I can talk to them about. Okay, so let's go, let's dig at that a little bit. You know, here's a 41 day old lead, okay, that was on a 19 F-150 XL that's sold. Okay, well, it's sold. Is that the only vehicle I can sell them to? Or is that the only vehicle they might be interested in? Well, see if there's other trucks in your inventory that, that you can show them. This 19 deal lead wanted a 22 F-150 XLT that was priced at 57 grand. Well, guess what? You got a 2023 Lariat at 59 grand, just two grand more, three grand more. See if you can switch them from that F-150 XLT to this Lariat, okay? So my point being is um, the fact that you, you're going through the same cycles as inventory does. All of a sudden you go from selling 20 cars a month to now 30, 40 cars a month. You're shoving in extra cars in a turnaround time that doesn't have the process or the staff to handle it. You're getting jammed up. Cars are bleeding through. You have an age or gross problem. Same things happen with leads. We're getting a 20 to 30% increase in shopper activity, which means a 20 to 30% increase in lead activity. And if all you're doing is going through and managing leads based on the age of the lead and not situations on your lot, you're going to end up having problems keeping up with that lead count and you're going to lose a ton of deals and a lot of money and a lot of wasted man hours. So 
um, I just want you to make aware of that. But in the meantime, if there's something that you would like to see if we can help you with, because again, our tool is going to be able to just isolate that. We're not here to replace your CRM. Your CRM is where you do your calls, your emails and texts. I'm just going to want to be able to spoon feed you. Hey, you got a truck problem. Here's your truck leads. Hey, you got a 50 to $55,000 problem. Let's call those leads. Or, hey, if anything, let's just call the leads today where the car's still in stock and let's focus our time and energy there so we can focus on turning our inventory. And same with the inventory stuff. We I don't care what your inventory management tool is. I'm not here to replace your V autos, your VIN queues, your max digitals and, and dealers links. I'm not here to replace that. I just want to get some information from them. And then again, help you point out those problems and figure out what cars are causing those problems. Is it a pricing problem or a people problem? Do I have a lead problem? Okay. So we can integrate those two tools into one to allow you to do a virtual lot walk. But if anything, I want you to be aware of these patterns and stay ahead of them because it's going to get tricky going forward. And what's going to happen is we're going to be so much scrambling through February and March here come April as we're taking a breather. Things start slowing down and that's when you can't take the eye off the ball. Anybody submitted these leads and the car sold, still follow up with them. They got to buy something. They'll still have their uh, tax check possibly if they haven't bought anything yet. So I hope this tip was helpful. Um, if you like Go to lotwalk.com, sign up for a demo. Let me show you how we can make your life easier when it comes to these, these issues I brought up. Um, I don't think they're fictitious. I don't think I'm being biased here. This is an actual problem that's happening on your lot that's easily solved. Um, and again, if you're watching this, please subscribe, follow, like, share. And if you happen to watch this on podcast, maybe check it out on the video to look at the charts we just went over. Have a great day.